Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Remember, the show is brought to you by the financial support of our listeners. You can support the show at support.greatdetectives.net, or you can become one of our many ongoing Patreon supporters, patreon.greatdetectives.net, pledge as little as $2 a month. But now it's time for today's adventure with Michael Shane, and it's time for the case of the wandering fingerprints. <laughs> She closed my office door behind her, started walking slowly toward me. Her lips looked warm, her eyes looked cool. Matter of fact, everything about her looked awfully good to me, except for one thing. That big black gun she was pointing at my belt buckle. New Adventures of Michael Shane, Private Detective. Michael Shane, reckless, red-headed Irishman, is back again in his old haunts in New Orleans. This is your director, Bill Russo, inviting you to listen to another transcribed episode, which we call The Case of the Wandering Fingerprints. Yeah, what'll it be, bud? Huh? Oh, nothing. I'm just waiting for somebody. Nothing. Look, Mac, you're in a bar. People usually drink in bars. That's what we're in business for. Okay, okay. Give me a give me a bottle of pop. A what? A bottle of pop. That's what I thought you said. Look, Junior, do you mind? No. Uh-uh. Thanks. Mike Shane? Uh, yeah. I'm Ziegler. Bring your drink over to the table here. Okay. Been waiting long? No, oh, just a couple of minutes. Well, let's have it. You said on the phone they'd be doing it. They could be. Well, look, Ziegler, let's not play guessing games. What's your pitch? You and I are going to be partners, Shane. Partners? What do you mean? I've got a little proposition you are going to go for. You know, you sound awful sure of yourself. Oh, I am. Well, let's have it. All right. Know anything about electrolysis? Ele- Look, I'm no chemical engineer. I am, sort of. Enough of one to have figured out this process. This pro- Look, will you do me a favor? Start at the beginning. All right. I've got a process by which I can transfer fingerprints. You can what? Transfer fingerprints from one place to another, any place. You're nuts. Am I? It can't be done. Uh, don't take any bets on that, Shane. You'd have to pay off. Look, I tell you, it's impossible. It's simple, if you know how. So you dust the prints with a certain chemical powder. You follow me? You take a picture of them, then make an electrolytic plate from the negative. Then dip it in acid. Then you make a mold from liquid rubber. And there you are. Where? With a little rubber stamp of somebody's fingerprint. Look, uh, I don't know anything about this chemical double talk you're giving me, but the whole thing's impossible. You just can't... Like I say, don't take any bets. Now, here's where you figure. We're going to start a little fingerprint service. We, uh, we sign up various clients. They all pay an initiation fee, a large one, as a matter of fact. Uh, Just a minute. What do these people get for signing up? Well, it's not so much what they get if they sign up. It's what they get if they don't. Yeah, that's what I thought. Their fingerprints turn up in the wrong place. Exactly. Beat it. Now, Shane, that's not a very wise attitude. If you think I'm going to be a front man for a blackmail racket... That's an ugly word, Shane, but that's more or less your job. To locate promising clients for me. I said beat it. You know, you're not being smart at all. Look, maybe you didn't hear me. All right, I'll give you a little time to think it over. But you'll come around. Yeah? Don't you take any bets on that. Oh, you'll come around, all right. Because, you see, 
you have no choice. And before very long, I think you'll see exactly what I mean. In a moment, we'll return to Mike Shane and the case of the wandering fingerprints. Well, you run into all kinds, I guess. But that day, I'd hit the jackpot when a character named Ziegler told me to meet him in a bar and offered me the charming job of being a front man in a friendly little blackmail setup. I still didn't believe he could transfer fingerprints like he said, but he sure seemed convinced of it. I turned down his deal in a hurry. He implied I was making a large size mistake. Then, as I sat at the table watching him leave, I saw him stop at another table near the door. There was a cool-looking brunette sitting there alone. Ziegler said something to her and jerked his head in my direction. The brunette favored me with a long, cold frown. Then Ziegler left, but the brunette kept dissecting me with her eyes. I got the hunch that she was in the deal some way with Ziegler. Finally, even though the expression on her face was pushing me back, it was just too much there for me to stay away from. So I picked up my glass and went over to her table. Hello. The answer is no. But did I ask? What else would you call it? Uh, look, maybe we'd better run through this again from the beginning. Why? Well, maybe we'll come out with a different answer. One that makes a little more sense. The answer will still be no, and that makes plenty of sense to me anyway. Good night, Mr. Shane. Well, I sat there with my mouth open while she walked out the door. And I was one puzzled guy. What that little conversation was all about was way beyond me. Either I'd missed a few key words here and there, or... else the girl was passing up a great career as a mind reader. The bartender came over to the table about then and started picking up the glasses, so I left. It was still early, and I suddenly felt like doing a little of the town. So I called a redhead I know and asked her if she was busy. She wasn't, so we took in the town. The next morning, feeling chipper as a school kid on Saturday, I tripped down to my office, opened the door, picked up the mail on the floor, and started for my desk. Then I stopped. The chair behind my desk was rocking slowly back and forth, and it was occupied. Hello, Shane. Well, well, Inspector Lefebvre. Inspecting again? Sit down. Yeah, thanks. Uh, you uh, decided to move your headquarters here, or is this a social call? Wrong twice. Well, it's early yet. I'll sharpen up. Now, let's see. What could it be this time? Murder? Maybe robbery? Robbery. Arson? Huh? Robbery. Hey, hey look, I, I was kidding. I wasn't. No, no, no wait a minute, Lefebvre. What goes? You know an old family named Chartier, Shane? I live in the quarter. Chartier? No, why? Sure. I said no. Haven't paid any social calls on him lately? Say, last night? Look, I told you I don't know him. Why would I be paying him a call? Just trying to give you a break, Shane, but you won't even go halfway. What are you talking about, Lefebvre? I'll tell you. Last night, the Chartier home was broken into. A bunch of jewelry was stolen. What's that got to do with me? I don't know yet. Maybe plenty. We found your fingerprints there. You... My fi... Oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, Inspector, there must be some mistake. My fingerprints couldn't have been there. Shane, fingerprints are sort of a hobby with us. There wasn't a mistake. They're your prints. How come? I, I, I don't know how come. I. Oh, no, it couldn't be. You're pretty hard to convince. Oh, that's not what I meant. I, I meant... Oh, skip it. It'd sound like it was right out of a book. What would? Look, Lefebvre, I, I didn't rob the Chartier home. Give me credit for more brains than that. I had given you credit, Shane. That's what puzzles me. Hey, hey, any idea what time the robbery took place? Between 12 and 1? <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm awfully happy to hear that. Mm hmm. Alibi? Yeah, I had a date with a redhead. Yeah. You happen to remember her name? Of course, she's a friend of mine. Patty Battercookin'. Patty Battercookin'. Huh. Now, nah, Shane. Look, could I make up a name like that? You could. We'll check it. Yeah, I know you will, Inspector. And, uh, keep in touch, huh? Yeah, I know. Don't leave town. Mm hmm. One more thing. What is it? How about a little shot of oil for your chair? Well, as usual, the inspector left me with a lot of questions and no answers. Not even an answer about the squeaky chair. I sat there for quite a while trying to figure out another logical explanation. And I finally gave up. Because as far as I could see, there was only one answer. 
Ziegler was able to transfer fingerprints, and he'd taken this very quaint way of proving it to me. I spent a little while in a half-hearted search for a can of oil and gave up. I guess I must have been staring unhappily out the window for maybe 15 minutes when I heard a slight noise behind me. I turned around and looked up. There, standing beside my desk, was my friend Ziegler. Hello, Shane. You again. Me again. You, um... You had a visitor a little while ago, didn't you? Inspector Lefevre. So? What did he want, Shane? He just heard a new joke and had to run right down here and tell me. Uh Uh-uh. I think he wanted to tell you about that robbery at the Chartier place. And about your fingerprints being there. Hmm? Okay, okay. I don't know how you did it, but... It's very simple. I told you. My process. Yeah, yeah, your process. Look, you may not realize it, but I was just lucky enough to have an alibi for last night. If I hadn't... Oh, but I do realize it. I know you had an alibi. And that's just the way I wanted it. You what? Certainly. I didn't want you to get into trouble. This time... Look, I don't get it. But I don't want to get it. This little game you're playing, it's not going to work. I told you once, I'm not going to be front man for your blackmail pitch, and I still mean it. You know, you are hard to convince. Well, I guess I have no other alternative. What do you mean? Oh, just that I'd hate to have the same thing happen to you that happened to Al Metcalf. Metcalf? You have heard of Al Metcalf, haven't you? Yeah, I've read about him in the papers. He's on trial for murder. That's right. Hey, wait a minute. Are you trying to tell I'm me that... I'm just pointing out that Al could have been a partner of mine. He had the same opportunity you have. But he was difficult about it. He turned me down. Cold. So? They've got a case against him. It's three to two. He'll be found guilty. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. And it's interesting, isn't it, that most of the case against him is his fingerprints at the scene of the crime. You... you mean you deliberate... you... you planted them? I wouldn't want that to happen to you, Shane. So don't keep me waiting any longer. Don't exactly leave me much choice. Right. So you're my boy, Shane. From now on. And don't ever forget it. Inspector Lefevre's already had you on the carpet for robbery. Think of the fun he's going to have when he gets you for murder. In a moment, we'll return to Mike Shane and the case of the wandering fingerprints. Well, it all started when a character named Ziegler offered me a partnership in a fingerprint-planting blackmail corporation. I declined without thanks, so Ziegler promptly planted my fingerprints at the scene of a robbery, thereby bringing Inspector Lefevre into my office for an antisocial call. The inspector left after a few minutes to check my alibi, and then Ziegler dropped in. He told me he could, if necessary, plant my prints at the scene of a murder, like he said he'd already done with a guy named Al Medcalf, who, as a matter of fact, was facing a murder rap right now. Well, that sort of weakened my opposition. Ziegler pronounced me his boy. He told me to meet him that night in the same bar, and he'd give me my instructions then. After he left, I grabbed the phone and called Inspector Lefevre. Homicide, Lefevre. Shane, Inspector. Yeah. There is a Patty Batterkirk in Shane. No, wait a minute. I... And you were with her last night. So you're in the clear on that robbery, I guess. Thanks. I don't get it at all. Say, incidentally, what's Patty so mad at you about? That's not what I called you about, Lefevre. Look, you're holding a guy named Al Metcalf on a murder rap. You've been reading back issues. Metcalf's been our guest for weeks. Well, it's a bum rap, Inspector. Metcalf's innocent. Really, Shane? I tell you, he's innocent. Shane, I'll make you a little proposition. Yeah, yeah. You run your business, we'll do likewise. Look, I'm trying to tell you Metcalf's fingerprints were planted at the scene of the murder. Yeah. Oh, I know it sounds phony, but it's the truth. There's a guy named Ziegler who can transfer fingerprints. He transferred mine to the scene of that robbery, and he framed Metcalf for this murder the same way. Shane, you're missing a real good bet. The pulp magazines are just crying for guys who can come up with stuff like that. Okay, okay, but I'm telling you, Lefevre, Metcalf's innocent. And what's more, I'm going to prove it to you. 
All of which was easier said than done, of course. I went over to the library and spent an hour or so reading up on the Metcalf case in the papers. I copied down the names of most of the people involved, and then I started out. The first guy I tried was a pawnbroker. Sure, sure, no doubt about it. Metcalf's the guy who bought the gun from me. The gun that killed Joey Krause. I checked off the pawnbroker's name and went to see the woman who had been the dead man's landlady. I saw this Al Metcalf go into Mr. Krause's room that night, just about five minutes before the shot was fired. And Metcalf was the only visitor Mr. Krause had that night. The next guy I tried was a character named Dixon, who used to be a pal of Krause's. Motive? Sure, Metcalf had a motive. A girl named Bunny. She was Metcalf's girl. Then she got to running around with Krause. So, Metcalf knocked off Krause. But take my word for it. Don't go bothering Bunny, because she's my girl now. Yeah, all the answers were the same. Al Metcalf was guilty. He really had killed Joey Krause. Well, about then, I got on the trail of a very interesting thought. Wild, but interesting. But also about then, my watch said 8 o'clock, and I was due at the bar to meet Ziegler. So I didn't have any more time for meditation. But I knew that somehow, some way, I had to find a weak spot in Ziegler. Something that'd give me a club, too. And then I thought of a gag that might just possibly give me that club. It was old, but it could work. <laughs> Ziegler was sitting at his table waiting for me. As I walked over to him, I could see he didn't look very happy. Sit down, Shane. Yeah, thanks. You're late. A little. I don't like people to be late. What kept you? Look, in case you don't know it, I work for a living. What kept you, Shane? I was conducting a little investigation. Who for? Me, okay? Shane, you have quite a few things to learn about working for me. Your attitude, for one thing. It'll have to change. But we'll let that go for now. I've got a list of people I'm going to give to you. I want you to contact each of them and sign them up. You can start... Cigarette? Here. Thanks. Here's a light. Help yourself. Thank you. Now... Oh, uh, just one thing. What is it? The girl. What girl? The brunette who was sitting over near the door the last time I talked to you here. Oh, you mean Susan. Do I? What about her? That's what I'm wondering, where she fits in. Well, let's just say that you and she and I will be sort of uh, in business together. I see. Why? Oh, well, just so after you left, I I went over to her table. Well? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I thought we might make a little light conversation, but she wasn't having any. Well, she can be difficult. Shane, all this talk about nothing in particular, I somehow get the impression you're trying to stall me, and that would be very foolish, Shane. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, Ziegler, I, I've been trying to stall... But it, it hasn't worked, so I'm not going to stall anymore. Okay, give me that list. I'll go to work. He grinned, gave me the list, and left. Yeah, I was right. I wasn't going to stall anymore. Because that stray thought I'd started working on before had come back. And what brought it back was my remembering I'd taken my drink over to Susan's table that time before. Yeah, I was pretty sure I had the answer now. But pretty sure wasn't sure enough. I scooped up my cigarette lighter and went down to police headquarters. I dropped the lighter off in one of the offices so that the boys could admire it. And then I went to see Inspector Lefebvre. Oh, that boy just loved to swing back and forth in desk chairs. He was at it again. Come down to tell me why Patty, what's her name, is mad at you, Shane? I came down to tell you I was wrong, Inspector. About Patty? No, about Al Metcalf. He's guilty, all right. Well, now, that's real good to know. Uh, look, Metcalf's fingerprints were at the scene of the murder. Huh? Where were they? Plastered all over the place. Yeah. Now, my fingerprints were at the scene of that robbery at the Chartier House. Mm -hmm. Where were they? Why? Believe me, Lefevre, I'm asking you the $64 question. Where were my prints? On a glass. Yeah. Thanks, Lefevre. No charge. Oh, you leaving? Uh-huh. I got to see a girl named Susan. Need any help? No, this is sort of a private deal. Sure you don't need any help? Sure. Uh, there is one thing, though. What's that? A cherry yours could stand a shot of oil, too. I walked out before he could think of an answer, but I had to hurry. 
I picked up my lighter and a few interesting facts with it and went back to my office. I sat there for a few minutes trying to figure out how I was going to find Susan. But I needn't have bothered. Because just about then, my office door opened. In came Susan. She closed the door behind her and started walking slowly toward me. Her lips looked warm and her eyes looked cool. Matter of fact, everything about her looked awfully good to me, except for one thing, that big black gun she was pointing at my belt buckle. Well... You just won't take no for an answer, will you, Shane? Let's not start that double talk again. I tried to tell you before it was no deal. Look, do you have to keep pointing that gun at me and... What's no deal? The setup with Ziegler. Set... Oh, I think I get it now. You don't like the idea of anyone else working with you and Ziegler, is that it? Well, look, Susan, I don't like You've the idea... You've got any... a great sense of humor, haven't humor? you? I don't think it's very funny. Neither do I. Look, maybe maybe I'm stupid, but none of this makes stay sense. Stay where you are. None of that little palaver we had the other night in the bar made sense I either. I said stay where so you are. So you're working with Ziegler. I still don't see why... Oh, you... I'm working with Ziegler. That's a laugh. You're the one who... Hey, hey get back. Too I... late, sweetheart. You... Let go of me. Hey, hey. That's better. It was too big a gun for a lady to be carrying around anyway. Or aren't you, lady? Hey, no. No, not that. Now, now look. Stop it. Stop it, will you? All right. That's better. Uh, Now, let's get this thing straightened out. You're not working with Ziegler? Of course not. He he threatened to plant my fingerprints and implicate me in a murder. Well, I'll be... You too... Oh, sucker, me to sucker. You see, I... I could have been implicated, too. It it was all innocent enough, but I could have been made to look bad. Yeah, we're both in the same boat. Matter of fact, it's sort of nice in here. You can let go of me now. But I still don't see how Ziegler could have gotten that glass with my prints. I thought you took it. Hey, wait a minute. You can let go. That bartender. The one who was so anxious for me to buy a drink. He came over to our table and picked up the glasses right after you left. He gave it to Ziegler. He's our boy. Oh, Shane. Uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah, I seem to have a hold of you. Uh, Maybe... uh, Maybe we better wind up this Ziegler business, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, with an incentive like that, how could I lose? I charged over to the bar, but the bartender I was looking for was off duty. I got his address, though, and went over. Yeah, what's all... Oh, it's you. Yeah, it's me. You want to beat it, and I'm coming in. Hey, cut it out. What make you... Jim. Ziegler. Close the door, Jim. Okay. And Shane, back up against that wall over there. Well, looks like I hit the jackpot, Ziegler. Yes. And it's such a pity, too. Because this machine isn't going to pay off with anything except a slug. In a moment, we'll be back with a thrilling climax to tonight's Michael Shane adventure. Well, there I was. I'd figured out the whole deal, but at the moment it looked like there wasn't much future in being a genius. One look at the bartender and Ziegler showed me they didn't think so either. So you figured out my little scheme, eh, Shane? Yeah, lucky me. You know, I thought the mention of the Metcalf case was going to keep you in line. You pulled that one out of the headlines and tried to make me think you had something to do with it. It seemed to work for a while, anyway. Yeah, until I found out Metcalf really was guilty. We're wasting time, Ziegler. The rest wasn't too tough. I have to admit it was a pretty slick little scheme. Hmm, I thought so. Planting that glass with my prints, and then making me think you'd transferred the prints from one place to another. Ziegler. Oh, uh, incidentally, you were so interested in the general subject of fingerprints, you got me interested in them, too. Yours. Mine? Uh Uh-huh. I got them off my cigarette lighter. Remember, you used it. Clever, clever. And the boys down at headquarters did a little checking for me. I found out a couple of cities are interested in you. Topeka, for one, a bunco charge there, I think. You're always a man for a fast deal, huh? You're very thorough, Shane. I admire it. But... All right, Jim. Yeah. The bartender picked up an empty bottle. 
Then he held it by the neck, swung it onto the side of the table, and broke it. That left him with a jagged stub in his hand. He started toward me with it. I... I don't like broken glass, but there wasn't much I could do. I raised my arm in front of my face. Take care of him, Dykes. Well, Shane? <laughs> well, Inspector Lefever. How'd you know? When the boys reported to me that you'd brought in some fingerprints belonging to this guy, Ziegler, I thought maybe we'd better find out what was cooking. So we tails you. Right into the oven. <laughs> Inspector... Would you believe it if I told you I was awfully glad to see you? Yeah. Shane. Yeah? It's a good thing you didn't need any help. Huh? No comment. Well, that was just about that. The fever told me I was in line for some 500 bucks from Topeka. The reward posted for Ziegler. So I was really on top, and I went busting back to my office to tell Susan to pick up where we left off. Susan. Huh. When I got there, she was gone. I waited, but she didn't come back. I'm still waiting. You know, somewhere along the line, that girl must have read the old fable about getting somebody else to pull hot chestnuts out of the fire for you. Not that I minded that so much, but at least she... She might have flipped a few shells my way. Oh, well. There's always Patty Batterkirken, I guess. This is your director, Bill Russo, again. Our story is based on characters created by Brett Halliday. The music is composed and conducted by John Duffy, and Michael Shane is portrayed by Jeff Chandler. The New Adventures of Michael Shane is a Don W. Sharp production, transcribed in Hollywood and distributed exclusively by the Broadcasters Guild. This is Andrew from otrwesterns.com. I wanted to invite you to come take a look at our site. We stream live OTR Westerns 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, along with putting out podcasts of old-time radio westerns. Check us out at otrwesterns.com. You're listening to The Great Detectives of Old-Time Radio with Adam Graham. Now let's get back into the show. Welcome back. Well, a very audacious plan, but it does reflect how a lot of con men, uh, particularly in that era, operated. Uh, it makes particular sense when you find out he's wanted in other cities. Essentially, you get the local guy to be the fall guy as the person who everybody sees uh, making the request. And when somebody finally figures out the blackmail plot, uh, you basically, uh, make an effort to disappear and, uh, leave the whole thing on your front man. But Shane proved to be too honest for him. I like several parts of it, uh, including, uh, Shane and the girl both thinking they were working for the con man. Of course, the shooting at the end is one thing that's not particularly typical of con man because it moves you into an entirely different category of wanted criminal. But Inspector Lefevre's there with the safe, so it all works out in the end. All right, well, that will actually do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow for The Avenger, and then one week from tomorrow, the lineup returns to the great detectives of old-time radio. And we'll be looking forward to that. In the meanwhile, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives, and become one.